What's up, everybody? I'm Marcus. I'm Ryan. And together, we are the Northwest, Northwest Sports Fanatics. Fanatics. Back at you guys with the weekly Northwest Sports Fanatics NFL Power Rankings. All right, we're getting really close to when it really matters in December. The trophy is in reach, and we're going to go over our top three. All right, let's go over that top three. But first off, shout out to the Seattle Seahawks and also the Kansas City Chiefs. You're right. close, but not there yet. You know, anything could change. So let's start at number three with the New England Patriots. Okay, 10-2. and two, You beat the Rams 26-10. to 10. You got a sweet matchup Monday night versus the Ravens, and they are getting – Closer and closer to separate themselves, not necessarily from the Raiders, but from mm. the rest of the pack. All right, and I know El Jefe will like this ranking. <laughs> Shout out to all our folks out there in the New England area. But Mr. Tom Brady, congratulations to Tom Brady with his 201st win. He is now the winningest QB in all-time history of the NFL. And check this out. Since 2003, the Patriots have won 12 of 13 division titles. They've clinched all of their division titles by week 12. And, you know, with this year with no Gronk, I see it still playing out that way. Right. So a couple key injuries, especially Gronk being out for the year. A lot of people might be starting to maybe hop off the wagon and hopping on the Raiders. But just hold up real quick. Mm -hmm. The offense is third in the NFL. The defense is 16th. So overall, they got a real good complete package. They're very well balanced. Now, since week 11 in 2006, Tom Brady is 50 and 1. Let me say that again. 50 and 1 at home Ooh. versus AFC teams. Now, let me just give you a little quick breakdown comparison. Since week 11 in 2006 in the same period of time, the Cleveland Browns are 48 and 115. <laughs> so Tom Brady himself alone has more wins than Tom uh, than the Cleveland Browns overall as a franchise. So pretty scary stat. Um, the real key right now is going to be Martellus Bennett. Yes, sir. Right. And the rest of the offense that's a little bit banged up, you know, obviously with some of the wide receivers, Malcolm Mitchell has been able to kind of step up, but you mm -hmm. got Edelman and some of the others that are kind of lingering with their injuries. Mm -hmm. So eighth in the NFL, obviously in defense. And it's one of those things that you don't really think that the new England Patriots right. are really a defensive oriented team, right? right? They're plus five in turnover ratio. So they're a little bit better in these last few weeks. They're kind of picking up their game, mm -hmm. even though they're 16th in defense overall in the efficiency. Um, I do really like what they're doing in the pass rush. They're not where they want to be. If that's right. one bugaboo or weakness, that's they have, have is their pass rush, right? Yeah. So they're 24th in sack rate. 12th mm. in pressures. Now, they're probably wishing Chandler okay. Jones was still there, yeah. you know, obviously with the, you know, the kind of the up and down that they have, you know, in the ceiling for the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. But on the bright side, Kyle Van Noy and Chris Long had two sacks last week. Okay. So as you're moving forward and more than likely, it's looking like we're going to have a Raiders Patriot matchup. I really like to see them kind of step their game up and maybe impose their will, mm -hmm. you know, on some of the other teams to show really who is boss of the AFC. Well, they do have a, a pretty good secondary with McCourty and uh, Mr. Butler back there, also Logan Ryan. Um, but I want to touch on Mr. LeGarrette Blunt. Um, quietly is kept. He's having the, probably the best season of his career. He's 51 yards short from going over the 1,000-yard the mark. And he's also one touchdown from breaking the Patriots' uh, rushing TD single season mark, which is held by Hall of Famer Mr. Curtis Martin, and he set that record in uh, 95 and also 96. Right, so I believe Blunt has 10 TDs rushing right now. Mm -hmm. So him and Latavius Murray are the best goal line options really in the NFL right now since Beast Mode Marshawn Lynch right. is no longer in the NFL. So, I mean, I know Raider fans are loving the season that they're having. This is year one of probably four or five straight years oh, yeah. of being competitive, but don't sleep on New England. I still think they're the favorite team in the AFC, even though we have them at number three, but you can't sleep on Tom Brady and Belichick in the playoffs and especially in December. All right, so let's go to our number two team and we're going to talk about the Oakland Raiders. All right, the Raiders. They're 10 and two. Derek Carr looks like he is the MVP of the offense. Khalil Mack is the obviously the defensive MVP. You beat the Bills 38 to 24. You were down by 14, found a way to come back and win. Mm -hmm. Up next, you have a spicy matchup against the Chiefs Thursday night. Um, should be one of the best Thursday night matchups we have all year. All right, and the, the Raiders are growing up right before our eyes. They have six fourth quarter comeback victories this year. And check this out. They lost their last 72 games in which they've trailed by 15 points or more. 
So that just goes to show you that there's a sign that things are changing within the Raiders organization. And shout out to Reggie McKenzie. You know, you got Derek Carr, Khalil Mack, the cornerstones. But he also picked up some nice pieces as well to go along with that in Amari Cooper and some of the free agent pickups that he's been able to assign so the future is looking bright out there in oakland la vegas wherever they're going to be the future is bright for the raiders right so everyone likes to give Carr a lot of love as you know i'm more of a defensive guy so let's give khalil mack a little love he's already proven to be one of the best in the nfl mm -hmm. future hall of famer as long as he keeps it healthy and he obviously keeps you know not being you know obviously in trouble off right. the field but he's got some pretty amazing stats Three strip sacks in the fourth quarter in the past four games, mm -hmm. and he's recovered the fumble each time. Wow, that no other player games. in the NFL has done that. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, when he's creating the turnover and getting the initial hit, he's getting the football in the end, and then football possession equals what? Touchdowns for Carr on exactly. the other end. Now, in this Chiefs matchup, AFC West, spicy rivalry. They hate each other, right? This is the 113th meeting, but only the third time that both have at least nine wins at this point going into December. Wow. And then obviously the transition into January, which is really big. Now check this out. It's going to be rumored to be about 20 degrees at the game, right? Mm. Now the Raiders haven't played in a cold weather game like this with the implications since 2007. So okay. will the weather be a factor? They're used to that warm weather, obviously, mm -hmm. in L.A. and in Oakland. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to wait and see if that California weather going, obviously, and playing in KC, if that's going to be a factor for them. Now, they lost in October 26-10 to 10 versus the Chiefs, and they're still bitter about that loss. Yes. So this will be a time for a little bit of redemption. And Carr is definitely one of the – surprise quarterbacks of the NFL this year. I don't think anyone really thought that he'd be an MVP candidate. Mm -hmm. We knew he was good, right. but not this good. Now check it out. In the fourth quarter or overtime this season, he has 13 TDs and zero interceptions when trailing. So obviously, veins. you know, obviously at that point when you're down 10, 7, 14, mm -hmm. 13, you know, he's definitely cool as the other side of the pillow, as mm -hmm. Stuart Scott would say. Oh my God. And, and I really like where they're going. And if any team is going to be able to outwit out battle and out game the Patriots it's going to be the Oakland Raiders all right so there you have it the number two team and let's go to our number one team in this week's ranking and we're talking about the Dallas Cowboys all right 11 and one the best record in the NFL you clinched a playoff berth already you beat the Vikings in a smash mouth kind of up and down game 17 to 15 up next you have a great spicy matchup rivalry game versus the Giants on Sunday night all right so congrats to the Cowboys the only team in the NFL to to, to clinch a playoff berth but I want to talk about Mr. Dak Prescott um, he's more than just your typical game manager uh, check this out he's completed 53 percent of his throws 15 yards or more okay which is pretty awesome and the only rookie to complete more than that was RG3 when he completed 56 percent of his passes and he also won rookie of the year that year so look for Dak to be adding some hardware to his trophy case right so he's kind of like a right-handed version not as athletic Michael Vick mm -hmm. you know to a certain degree he's got the wheels obviously underneath them so he can scramble for first downs All right he's pretty accurate he makes good decisions yep. but I like Zeke you know obviously they got the Batman and Robin combo they got the number one offensive efficiency that's no surprise they've been mm -hmm. doing it for weeks now now Zeke has 12 TDs. He needs one to break Tony Dorsett's Cowboy record set in 1977. So at this point, they're both tied with 12. Right. You know Zeke is going to finish the year probably close to the 20 range, I would assume. Yep, Somewhere in that 18 to 20 range. Now, in week one, he had 51 yards against the Giants, and they got beat up. They didn't really know how good they were going to be. Right. They were just kind of feeling the Giants out. Now, since week one, he's number one in the NFL, and he's averaging 112.2 yards per game. And that's pretty stellar. So he's eating it up. He's getting the first downs they're really rallying on him and uh this is a really crazy stat that i just actually looked up a couple days ago now zeke has never lost a road game in his career wow and i'm not even talking cowboy career we're going all the way back to high school wow. so in high school he went to john burroughs for three years mm -hmm. never lost a road game went to ohio state right for three years 14 and 0 on the road never lost a road game and wow. then now we're obviously in the nfl rookie season of him at this point, still hasn't lost a road game. So that's really a pretty crazy stat. I mean, he's a winner. Right. He's definitely, <laughs> definitely a winner. You don't really think that he's going to be that prime time, but he is just like Dion. And uh, this is really going to be interesting as we move forward. They have 
four straight primetime games, obviously due to their record and their popularity. Mm -hmm. Everyone wants to see the Cowboys. Either you're rooting for them to get to the Super Bowl or you're rooting against them to fail. Right. right? So you had the Vikings game on Thursday night, mm -hmm. which they squeaked out the victory. Sunday night against the Giants. Another Sunday night game, obviously, versus the Bucks. Okay. Right? That got flexed for recently. Right? And then a Monday night game against the Lions. Wow. So this is going to be a very tough stretch against three potential – Playoff teams. Wild card playoff teams. Not mm -hmm. maybe the Giants, Bucks, and Lions may not all get in, right. but it is possible. So this will be a very good test for Jerry Jones, Mr. Garrett, and mm -hmm. obviously Dak and Zeke to see if they can move forward and collect the trophy at the end. All right. So there you have it. Our Northwest Sports Fanatics top three NFL teams. We'll be back at you soon with a new video. Um, Marcus, this is Orion. Only got one question for you. Who you know talks sports like us? Northwest Sports Fanatics. Oh, 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 oh,